geography optional so there i discussed what are the advantages of geography and why should we choose geography optional so some certain basic things were discussed by me i told you geography is inherently having scientific nature because of its scientific nature it is far more interesting far more scoring than other options and i told you because of scientific nature it is more logical so you you does not require cramming because topics are integrated with each other and you have to be very thorough with each of them and uh, i told you that geography is having inherent advantage in gs like 100 marks questions in gs paper 1 100 marks questions in gs paper 3 plus there are certain topics which are so common in gs like global climate change global warming coral reefs sustainable development biodiversity these topics are integral part of geography because even if you don't take geography you will have to be very extensive with these topics and in geography we study these topics very extensively so you will have an inherent advantages over the other aspirants now one more thing the entire advantage of geography can be reaped only if this subject is taught in a particular way in a particular fashion otherwise you won't reap the advantage of geography so what do people do they, they tend to find shortcuts he because they feel that geography is having big syllabus so let us go for selective study and as i told you now since 2008 onwards 60 marks questions uh, this is uh, 60 marks questions ha have stopped now they are asking small questions 15 marks 15 marks 20 marks this way they are asking questions from every section of geography so now you have to be very thorough with geography and moreover the advantage that you reap in geography that that you have in geography in gs you can avail that advantage only when you study geography thoroughly because geography has also you will feel a glimpse in essays also geography has huge impact Ge apart from gs and geography itself is a highly scoring option provided you study in a particular fashion provided you study in a particular way so here i would first advise you ki look at the na books see uh, suppose one topic in geography is origin and first topic of geomorphology is origin and evolution of the earth crust what do people do they end up studying origin and evolution of the earth basically that is entirely different origin and evolution of the earth is entirely different topic and what has been mentioned in syllabus origin and evolution of the earth crust that is entirely different so that is what happens you have to be very thorough with the syllabus i told you 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 must cram the syllabus of geography and you must go through last 10 years questions in geography N now what strategy do i adopt i tend to adopt a full proof strategy and therefore i end up extending the course to 5 month to 5 and a half month because if you want to have thorough grip over the geography you need to give time and basically if you want to reduce geography in 200 pages what happens the most uh, the most difficult dilemma before the student is sir i am unable to revise the subject at the end at the last hour they say at the fag end of the preparation they say sir i am unable to revise the subject why because they tend to underline in books anywhere and at times they tend to make notes at times you tend to uh, go through some magazines you need to have an integrated approach what do i do in paper 1 whatever suppose first topic is geomorphology suppose i take the first topic i will ask you i will provide you the notes keep them with you whatever i have discussed in class class discussion in class you have to focus on the concepts back at home you will get the same classroom video also whether you are online student or offline back at home make notes from the video suppose the note takes 5 pages to 10 pages the most important thing now is to study these 5 to 10 pages 10 15 times 
until you are very thorough with it once you have studied 10 15 times reduce these 10 5 to 10 pages into one page and that we call as synopsis once you have made the synopsis you need to revise only this synopsis likewise of every topic of geomorphology you will make synopsis geomorphology will be reduced in 10 pages 12 pages climatology will be reduced in 15 pages likewise the entire geography will be reduced in 200 pages and you can revise these 200 pages 10 times it will hardly take 3 days to revise entire geography people do what do they do this is the sh but to reduce the geography in 200 pages it will take at least 6 7 months 6 7 months if you want to reduce geography into 200 pages by making synopsis of every topic and that is the only way out even in gs also you whatever you study you make the synopsis you cannot remember everything you have to remember the crux and that is what you can reproduce in exam now once you have made the synopsis suppose geomorphology you have made the notes and synopsis of every topic then i conduct tests now previously until now i was evaluating myself now i have a team of seven teachers who, who will evaluate along with me previously i used to uh, read the answers on the whatsapp voice message and i used to give the explanation for it or wherever changes are required i used to read the answer that used to take a lot of time now i have a team of 6 7 teachers who will sit along with me and they will evaluate the answers and they will give you the feedback on the answer sheet itself where you are going wrong what all changes you have to make so when you will write the test you will find the importance of the synopsis if you have made the synopsis 50% of the writing skill work is already done here while making the synopsis i will tell you like any other subject every subject has its own terminology geography is also having its own terminology people initially they are in a habit of using the layman's language layman's language reveal that you are not a sub student of geography there is some student ask me sir in gs or geography paper 2 there are certain very generalized questions as if they are from gs so how to input the geographical aspect in them beta if you are a student of geography you would use geographical terminology and that terminology itself will give the geographical aspect to that answer question there's no special need a layman a subject of a student of anthropology or sociology while he will write the answer he will write in a layman's language but if you are a if you are having geography as a option there are certain keywords geographical terminologies in physical geography in human geography and while writing the answers those terminologies itself will reveal that you are having geography as an option and the geographical aspect will be there now here having the tests ha yeah ha huh. so what happens people have a tendency ki sir how to reproduce the ideas once you make the synopsis the most important thing is people are unable to recall the things question chodo if question is twisted that is a different thing i am saying a direct question is there still they have a difficulty why few things are there students make grammatical mistake because most of the students are not so proficient in english first thing in geography it doesn't account much if you go by my advice you won't have to write so much because what happens in sociology and anthropology and political science you have to be very flowery in your answer but in geography since it is scientific so your command over the english does not matter so much why in geography you have to be very much creative by way of diagrams even before writing the answer suppose you have made the synopsis 
by making the synopsis you have you, you have come to know the terminology of geography you have come to know the content of the topic now when you start writing an answer first you if it if it is required you will draw the diagram people say is it necessary to draw the diagram sir do do we need to draw diagram in every question but uh, the purpose of drawing the diagram is if you can make your answer more visible more apparent more clear मतलब इफ यू इफ यू कैन मेक इट इजियर फॉर एग्जामिनर वॉट यू हैव रिटर्न ओवर देयर देन दिस इज गुड इट इज गुड टू मेक डायग्राम्स अदरवाइज डोंट मेक डायग्राम्स एंड मैप्स फॉर द सेक ऑफ मेकिंग इट इन पेपर टू वॉट डू आई डू वाइल डिस्कसिंग रिसोर्स और एनी आस्पेक्ट आई ऑलवेज टीच बाई वे ऑफ मैप्स ऑफ स्टेट्स सो यू सपोज कॉटन मिल्स इन दिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ कॉटन मिल्स मेक द मैप ऑफ महाराष्ट्र लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ कॉटन मिल्स दीज आर द एरियाज गुजरात and then likewise andhra pradesh you keep on making that this is more illustrative and if you make the entire map of the country it doesn't reveal anything make the map maps of the state that is small maps that consume less time and they increase the visibility of your answer so diagrams are required there to increase the visibility of your answer examiner will precisely come to know suppose in maharashtra uh, mumbai is the biggest center so what you will do what you will do you will make a star on mumbai apart from mumbai pune nagpur other centers are there important one ballar shah isn't it in chandrapur paper making so what you have to be very precise in the diagrams make the diagram state wise wherever it is required at times make it, people you, people are unable to express it's better not to make diagram diagrams tabhi banane hain when you are in a position to in enhance the visibility by way of drawing the diagrams and wherever wherever you are you are writing the answer always draw the diagram above suppose distribution of iron steel mills then draw the diagrams of state state wise for example in jharkhand these are the steel mills in odisha the, so before writing make the diagram so examiner must come to know what you have written over there the purpose of diagram is to enhance the visibility of your answer bacche kya karte hain they write the entire answer at the end they draw the diagram that defeats the purpose itself draw the diagram just above before you write and below, below that mention it so examiner will come to know what you have written over there and he will not in, um, go much into the details of your answer he will he won't uh, try to decipher your handwriting and he will come to know by diagram itself what you have written over there so this will enhance your marks fetching potential now what how do we how does the test bring improvement ab test ka purpose kya hota hai first we see some of the students in fact 70% of the student have problem in grammar so we advise them see you it's not that ki overnight you can improve your english but what i see ki hey, yes there's a way out you see the video multiple times how do we learn the language suppose if you are born in china you would speak chinese fluently without uh, getting taught in any school same way the problem with english is you need to make an environment for example in geography geographical terminology and english you see keep on seeing my videos and you will become very much accustomed to certain things and those things will become yours you can use them at as per your will and in geography be precise don't write long sentences write short sentences to the point geography is precise regarding paper 2 things are different paper 2 is applied and i will i discussed in paper 2 not only you have to cite case studies but you have all to also to cite principles from physical geography and perspectives in human geography i will give you the examples also so while i will give you the test you will write the answer while discussing If this grammatical problem will pinpoint the grammatical problem will pinpoint where where diagrams are missing in conclusion in paper 2 conclusion is in the form of solution because paper 2 is applied in paper 1 conclusion may be in the form of uh, supporting the hypothesis yes this hypothesis still holds true in different questions the nature of conclusion varies now while writing the answer okay the introduction main body conclusion people feel as if these are three different things it is see they are seamlessly connected nobody comes to know where the introduction stops and the main body begins 
and where the conclu conclusion in paper one is different in paper two is it is in the form of solution in paper one usually it is in the form of validation of the theory or how far this theory is true or wrong now in test when your answer is evaluated you precisely come to know whether you are having problem in grammatical aspect whether you are not drawing the diagrams properly or you are having problem in the conceptual aspect or you are unable to recall the factual aspect and fifth how well you are able to conclude your answer depends upon holistic understanding of the topic this is the most important phase because ultimately you get marks for writing not for reading so tests happen to the most important phase here initially we take topic wise test like once we complete geomorphology geomorphology test we complete climatology we take climatology test we, we complete oceanography we take oceanography test now once physical geography is over what we see that there are certain topics which were removed from the syllabus in 2008 but the questions are still being asked like periglacial landforms glacial landforms karst topography hai na sea wave landform carved by sea waves they are still being asked so for that i will advise you to go through gc leong a certificate in physical geography and i will also personally handle those topics plus in geomorphology there is a tendency in upsc to ask one or two short note which is not precisely in syllabus and you cannot say it is out of syllabus but such questions usually people are unable to answer it so don't bother about those questions ha huh, certain topics which were there in previously now they are asking question we will get them covered and you can also cover them from gc leong but there are certain principles of thornbury uh, from where also they ask questions and i will try to cover them also but what i feel ki giving too much time to physical geography is not so fruitful because second part human geography it is equally important it has same weightage and here there is a topic perspectives in human geography that is the heart and soul of geography perspectives here you come across various terms certain terms which basically uh, directly get manifested in questions certain concepts scholars number of scholars who propounded this idea deterministic approach possibilistic approach uh, uh, pragmatic possibilism probabilism cultural determinism what is ethnocentrism ethnocentricity so these aspects have to be social darwinism what is human ecology so yahan par what do we do we discuss it very exhaustively and i provide you entire notes in perspectives you have to this takes the max maximum time in geography this topic perspective longest because it is from here that you will cite numerous examples in paper 2 basically while studying any aspect when you are for example on either side of rhine river what you see on one side france vosges mountains there on the other side black forest mountains there in germany both are physiographically similar environment according to deterministic approach both areas must have same cultural landscape but as per the uh, as per redzel uh, he said although physiographically both are same but the cultural landscape is entirely different this shows that people living in same physiographic setting may not have same way of life they may interpret the same environment differently because environment is interpreted by way of cultural filter and every cultural filter gives you a different impression of real environment so this way you can cite the examples in paper 2 yahan par in human geography basically uh, perspectives population settlement very good topic and basically regional planning very short topic small topic and then there is a topic there is uh, this uh, uh, models very important and economic geography in economic geography here you will Uh, see foreign trade policy and basically uh, uh, balance of trade the, those aspects you will see large aspects of economics is also covered distribution of resources now here while studying the distribution of resources and in industries it's impossible to study each and every resource and industry for this what i have done i have uploaded 13 videos on youtube world regional geography by ajay ras singh there are these are 13 videos if you i have discussed every country individually 
country, its soil, its vegetation, its climate, its resources, its industries, its mountains, its rivers, its uh, human aspect, everything. So you will feel as if you have visited the country. So go through those videos. That will help you a lot in this economic geography, in human geography, world distribution of resources and industries, factors influencing distribution of industries. That, that part will be covered. Be it physical geography, geomorphology, climatology, oceanography, biogeography, environment, or human geography. These are more or less static. If you accept environment geography, environment, the syllabus mentioned in geography option in environment geography is, is more or less static. But the questions that they ask are highly dynamic. Now, because global climate change, global warming, basically sea level rise, rise, uh, coral bleaching, and basically these are very important topics. And every day you see you news keep cropping up, and, and, and nationally intended determined goals are there, and every country is trying to pursue their goals, how to reduce the carbon footprints. These topics are such this con we continuously keep on updating through geography and you down to earth and yojana. Yojana, you all have to read. But down to earth and geography and you, especially for geography, where you will see yeah, there is continuous updates and ma your marks fetching potential in paper two, because in paper two, you will have applied questions since the nature of questions is applied. So here they want solution in, in, in conclusion, they want solution from your side. This solution you can derive only when you give proper case studies. Here you cite certain examples like Down to Earth magazine. We give numerous examples in geography and you also numerous examples are there. What measures have been taken by way of artificially developing coral colonies. We are building coral reefs. So you have to cite examples and you then you have to conclude in the form of solution. In paper too, at times they ask such questions, such questions which are, for example, quad previous year they asked the question of quad relevance of quad and maritime trade so such questions it appears as if they are very difficult to be answered but if you break it down if you know about quad strategic importance of quad strategic importance is correlated with maritime trade then you can correlate it with maritime trade so in political geography of uh, india political geography paper 2 we discussed, we have discussed this very elaborately, Indo-Pak border issue, Indo-China since before independence, after independence, how the issues have cropped up, what all went wrong and why these issues have acquired so uh, serious dimensions. What about India-Myanmar issues, border issues, so what, what about the geography, regionalism, what impact do regionalism have on nationalism, is uh, regionalism considered as sub-nationalism, how far it is good, how far it is bad. So these topics are such that they will have huge, you will find in political geography, when you study political geography, you will study that you have studied large part of international relations. When you study regional development planning, you will study, you have studied a part of basically polity. So geography, economic geography, you will see, feel you have studied large part of economics. Geography has having huge coverage. Its arena is very broad, which gives you the added advantage. While once you have completed the syllabus, then you are in the best position to articulate your answer. Now you know everything. What happens once we take sectional test, topic wise test, you have studied geomorphology or climatology, you won't have the embracing, you won't, you won't be able to know the applied aspect. Once you have gone through paper two also, then after that, when you will update those paper two content with this uh, current developments, then you will find yourself that a huge, huge part of GS is covered. I have said only 100 marks in GS1 and 100 marks in GS3, but you will find in GS3, it covers more than 100 marks. Basically, it, it, it has huge impact in paper two, GS2 also. And geography gives you overall understanding, understanding of every aspect, every topic. So it helps you in writing quality essays. So geography shapes up your entire personality. It's not that. And the best part is, what do I do? I make it a habit that make it a habit of writing essay every week. Write down essay every week. And I have appointed a separate teacher for essay without any charges. He will evaluate your essay and give you the precise feedback because essay is one thing that cannot be learned overnight. 
you keep on writing keep on writing keep on writing and don't get even get evaluated by writing itself you will see you have started improving upon yourself so geography those topics which are related from geography you can write essays very good but writing essays quite different from writing answers of op optional essays something different so here i will confine myself to geography optional ha huh. apart from essay also in gs it will give you huge benefit but you will have to go through every topic of geography if you skip suppose tumhe lagta hai yaar in aquaculture sericulture apiculture in paper 2 in agriculture certain topics are there from where no question has been asked in option uh, poultry farming but if you go don't go through those topics you won't reap the benefit in gs once go through the entire syllabus of geography you will feel the importance of geography how significant contribution it will have in your entire preparation of upsc it will cover huge portion and then later on you can be selective once you have made the synopsis you can know yes this synopsis is also useful in gs i can't afford to skip it and those topics you feel suppose you feel don't feel interested in climatology leave it skip it but once go through the entire syllabus make the notes make the synopsis at the last moment you you can be choosy you can choose 70% of the topics yes from here i am basically i will attempt but if any any case if a question comes which is such that you have left the 30% topic from where it has been asked but if you have gone through the entire syllabus you will be able to write some something matlab you can you will you will be able to fetch some marks so don't skip completely once complete the entire syllabus write tests on every topic and thereafter once you have made the synopsis when you have made the syllabus and once you have before exam revise entire syllabus it will hardly take 3 days to revise 200 pages revise entire syllabus at the last moment you can be choosy or at times what happens every weightage is equal now geomorphology climatology oceanography only 20 marks question is there that's it not more than that so you can be but if you see climatology is very bulky as compared to oceanography so you can afford to skip at the end because if you want you you have to attempt from that section that is also possible and but since you have gone through climatology that added advantage that you that you have clarity of concepts you know the concepts that will help you in gs that advantage won't be lost okay so this way we will cover the syllabus very rigorously and 15 june we will start the classes online and offline classes offline classes will be held at swayam ias odai nagar 57 oblique 12 second floor swayam ias offline classes and simultaneously online classes will also be held so first batch is starting from 15 june and we will have some more open sessions and where you can raise queries you can ask questions all the best